All right, so we're back with the conclusion of the Skunk Works build. I say the conclusion because I have been at this now for way too long. You guys are, you know, I, I, where would we be if I didn't give you guys all the jokes to make about how long it takes me to do a build? But, you know, when you do it in the spare time, it obviously takes longer. So let's go ahead and get, uh, let's get going here. I'll show you guys what's, what's come in, what's new, what uh, our plans are for the final build, <clears throat> and some things that we kind of figured out. The Elite XG270QG from ViewSonic breaks the traditional ugly appearance of gaming monitors by providing an ultra clean design while still delivering gamers the features that they want most. Features like a one millisecond response time, IPS 165 hertz overclock display, black brushed aluminum stand with tilt and swivel, mouse and keyboard cable anchors, and customizable subtle lighting. To learn more about the XG270GQ from ViewSonic and to see current pricing, click the link in the description below. All right, so I'm pausing this video real quick to let you guys know if you want the Size Matters merch, this shirt right here, this is your absolute last chance to get it. We're doing a last call. Once it's gone, it is gone. Just like our previous shirts, I've had people be like, oh, I didn't get that shirt, I want it. Are you gonna bring it back? The answer is no. These are limited seasonal runs. Once they're gone, they're gone. So not only available in black, they're also available in white. I personally like the white. I didn't think I was gonna like white that much. I actually really do. So if you guys want it, head to jayswhosense.com. Pause this video right now before we finish Skunk Works. So you got five parts to do a basic build. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. But anyway, jayswhosense.com, pause this video, go buy your merch, and then come back and finish the video. Thanks. He's still walking backwards. What did you do? <laughs> what? So I know the 7000D is advertised as a full tower case, but it really is feeling like a super mid tower, if you will, because uh, I think they could have gone bigger with this. For instance, with how big modern graphics cards are, if I wanted to vertical mount this, because I got the vertical mount plate that we needed from here, <clears throat> Corsair didn't bother sending me a riser cable for it though, so I had to grab another brand's riser cable. If we go ahead and slot this in here, where it goes, so there's a fitting that comes out of that pump, obviously, behind that, that valve. And even though the vector trio white part of the block extends out past the graphics card, because this is a long graphics card, uh, it creates an interference there to where I can't get a fitting, even a 90 degree to come out of there without hitting it. The other thing too, is if you look at this top part of the card, the terminal is nearly touching that RAM stick. So I don't have confidence I would even be able to get that RAM stick out if I needed. So although this does look kind of neat, um, I, I went with the acetal block, that way it matches my CPU block. As much as that looks neat, uh, I won't be going with the vertical in this because, yeah, we're, we're gonna have interference there. So that's the downside about trying to go water cooling with a long graphics card like this with a pump setup like I have here. Now, one of the things that would have assisted in this, obviously, is if I wasn't running a 45 millimeter thick rad in the front. But because I'm going with a 480 and a 240, I still effectively only have two 360s worth of cooling, which really isn't any more than what I have in my 5000D airflow. So we have a bigger case with no additional cooling, technically, because of the fact that um, our effective radiator space is the same. So that's unfortunate, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I'm gonna put the standard bracket back in here and we'll go ahead and see what, uh, what we can make of this. But my plans for today, are obviously to get the rest of it plumbed up and get the cables and everything in here and obviously get it on and running. Now we showed you guys in the last part, if you guys didn't see how I did this top tube right there. It took me two tries, but the challenge here is this is all the tubing I have left right here with my spares <laughs> to get the rest of the system done. Only one full length tube. However, I still think I am gonna do my pass through fittings right here. That way it'll look neater and uh, have a little bit of that Skunk works -y flair because that's one of the things I always did with Skunk Works back in the day was have the pass-through tubes. You can see they still exist there. Obviously, I need to show you guys the cables. <clears throat> so editing Phil apologizes. Sorry. That when I was like, here's the cables we went with, he didn't, he didn't uh, realize he was supposed to put a picture up. So here are the cables I got from Cable Mod. I only did 24 pin EPS power and graphics card because there's no other cables in here that are really gonna show. I usually don't waste the materials to have like SATA cables made and all that unless they're visible. And the nice thing about Cable Mod is the fact that they've got their new configurator 2.0, which is really neat because it does show the cables in a more realistic 3D kind of a drawing on what they'll look like. So as you're clicking the colors and choosing uh, which cables you want to be which color, 
you get a really good idea of what they're gonna look like. The other thing I really like about Cable Mod is the fact that their combs are metal. And because they're metal, it makes them a lot stronger and a lot less prone to breaking if you're trying to put you know, aggressive bends and stuff on them. The downside about the way cables ship, they do train themselves in the bag to stay in the position that they're in in the bag, which sort of sucks. So you wanna take them out, flatten them out, get them going. But something that they offer now is combo sleeving on the EPS power, which as you can see right here, this is my EPS power, which looks like GPU because it's two eight pins. But as you can see right here, we have two eight pins on our power. I don't like that they're separated, but that's fine. I can just pull the sleeves back like this and get them in there. Check this out though. Triple combed GPU plugs. So all three of the eight pin PCI Express. Hey, it looks like it's flipping you off. Anyway, look at that. See how nice and neat that is? So you can get the combs where you want it. And the combs do come in different colors. I chose black because obviously we've got a green and black theme sort of going here. The green's not a perfect match. I mean, it's hard to get fluid to match. I think there might be a slight bit more yellow in this green, but this is a UV green. So if we have any sort of UV light in there, then it would glow nice and bright. But you can see it's green, gray, black, gray, green. So what I did is I carried that particular theme through everything. The thing that sucks about this, and this is again, very important for things like configurators to figure out, the retention clip is on that side on the 24 pin, but it's on that side on the eight pin. So I was able to say like, oh, okay, so I need to invert this, which means now when I plug these into the top up here, because I didn't want the green to be so close together on these to where it, it just kind of overpowered the appearance. So there's that. So now I've got a little separation between the green and the 24 pin there. Anyway, enough talking. Let's let Phil do that thing that Phil does. And let's see if we can't get this done in this video, because that's the idea.
is done. It's done, finally. Uh, everything booted up on the first try, which it should have. Um, you usually hope, but with Threadripper, Okay, so this is the same motherboard and CPU I had in my workstation prior that I stopped using and now I'm using it again. So the CPU was never un unmounted, so it should not have had a problem working because remember Threadripper, you have to have just the right amount of torque on it using the torque wrench or it may not boot or all the RAM channels may not show up. But as you can see, everything is in. Check out these bends. These bends turned out really good. This was a harder bend than, well, it's a hard bend, but believe it or not, that's, that was the first try. But what I did was I used a template uh, that I made out of the clear tubing which was uh, kind of crap. In fact, I, don't, I think I threw it away. It looked like, wait, let me find it. I threw it and it didn't go in the trash can. I remember that. I, I don't know where it went. I think it ended up in the trash, but I used that as a template to bend this one piece because like I said, I, this is all that's left over. This is that one I originally filled to show you guys how it looked like a glow stick. Cause that's exactly the best way to describe what this green looks like as a glow stick. I did remix the coolant. So this was using just the laser green which wasn't really much different than the other green I mixed. So now I've got an extra bottle of it, but I added more of the UV laser green into what's in the system now. And then obviously uh, with the L Connect turned on, you can see that we've got our lighting sort of. The downside of this system is we have to use L Connect 2 for the fans. We have to use Corsair's IQ for the RAM, and then we have to use or Armory Crate for the motherboard and LED strips, which is what, um, the blocks are using. So it's unfortunate that we have three pieces of RGB software, but that is quickly becoming the norm. I gotta tell you, this is my second time using PMMA to bend tubes from Corsair. It is quickly becoming my favorite material to use. I don't know much about its chemical makeup. Uh, I guess long-term testing will show what happens to it with a glycol-based coolant over time. I know PETG and glycol-based coolant can have a chem bad chemical reaction, especially when heat is involved. That's why some people have noticed the tubes will kind of like blister or swell up and, and deform. Uh, I didn't have that happen with Skunk Works. One time, I had one time a tube kind of like ballooned a little bit, like where it met the fitting, but just a tiny bit and only enough to notice once you took it off. But what I love about this stuff is how tight you can get the bends and how close together you can get them because you can get the heat focused in one particular area and it doesn't transfer the heat down the tube as much as say PETG or acrylic does. So it allows me to get two bends like this real tight with each other and still have this be nice and 90 degree angle from the other two. Whereas the other tubes, if I was trying to heat here, heat would transfer down to here and then it would relax that bend and it starts to look like crap. But that was actually one bend and then I cooled it off and then I used tape that you guys might've seen during the B-roll, not to keep the heat from hitting the area, although it does help, uh, but that allows me to control where the bend is so I can keep it sort of measured. So these are two different bends at two different times without the heat affecting the neighboring bend. This is the tube that was up under here, uh, but I ended up re-bending another one because of the fact that I scooted the rad back slightly, which meant it no longer reached the fitting that I needed. So rather than using a fitting extension and then cutting down the tube, I decided to just remake it because I had enough tubing left over. Now, if I had another stick of it, like I said, I only had what? I think two sticks and some scraps or something for this entire build, which I would never usually do a rigid tubing build with that, with that limited amount of tubing. So this was really more so a, uh, a challenge for me. I would have then done a 90 and then another 90. So that would have matched all of these. But this looks a lot like circuit traces, which I really like, or even reminds me of the, um, the pipe screensaver, like on the old windows. But you guys will notice too, I ended up bringing in some skunk work stuff that we're used to doing in the past, like the pass-throughs. So I did drill through the floor, use a piece of uh, soft tubing to bring it over to here and then back up. That does nothing but give us uh, a, a cool effect that is something that I, I did initially with Red Mist. Red Mist was actually the first skunk works, if you will. I had a friend of mine, Chris, I built his system. That was Red Mist, if you guys remember that. And I liked his system so much, I basically recreated it for myself with a different color scheme and called it Red Mist, or no, Skunk Works. That was the update to Skunk Works when I went from the 900D to the Case Labs case, which is the one you see right there. But then I improved upon some of the stuff that I did with his build and incorporated it into my own. So one of the staples of Skunk Works was always pass through fittings through floors and that's what I did there. I moved the drain. Remember I had it coming out of here because now I've got this pass through, but this is actually the lowest point of the loop, not including the stuff that can, can get caught in the radiator. So I ended up using a T-fitting down there with some soft tubing. And then at the end of that soft tubing, I have the actual drain valve. So just like I had on this Skunk Works before I ended up having the all rigid tubing in the top uh, and the drains built into the bottom like they are, that, that has two drain valves built in hard lined on the bottom. 
This just has soft tubing like I used to have in the original build when it was yellow, when I could just kind of take that tube and hang it out of the system, uh, put a fitting on the end with a tube, open the valve and I could drain it right into a jug or something to keep, to keep it nice and, and neat. But in terms of the lighting though, I've got it pretty simple. I've got some blinky lights happening on the RAM, which I like. I've always liked some sort of light movement. And then if you notice, I've got static lights happening inside the fans. And then because the new AL fans for uh, Lee and Lee have hub lighting as well as edge lighting, I have the edge lights kind of alternating between white and green just to get some additional movement. My biggest issue with this build was once it was all put together, I was like, that's a lot of green, maybe too much green. So I kind of played with the shade to get it where I wanted it. Um, and now I'm happy with the way it turned out. For some reason, I'm not sure why, and I double checked, it is plugged in. The GeForce RTX logo on my block is not lighting up. It's not the first time I've had an EK block not light up or have problems right there. So that's unfortunate. I am clearly not taking this apart to swap the block because that won't light up. I'll just live with it not saying GeForce RTX. Although this color green with that lighting up would obviously be very NVIDIA-like, but whatever, I digress. Um, I like it a lot. So this is gonna be my new workstation. i um, got the two terabyte Crucial 4.0. So it's the uh, P5 Plus. They just sent these over. So I, I switched it from the original P5 to the P5 Plus that we showed you at the start. So this is the PCIe 4.0. And since uh, I'm using AMD, might as well use 4.0 because of the fact that we have 4.0's uh, transfer speed available to us. I also decided not to use the DIMM.2 because it was gonna look way too busy over here. So I just ended up sticking it down here in the bottom with an EK heatsink on there, which is a green one. Different shade of green from anything else in the system, but because it's tucked away in the shadows, you can't really tell. Uh, the EK heatsink is another Skunk Works part that was originally sent to me for that build but uh, because the NVMe drives ended up uh, at the time having chips on both the front and the back of the substrate meant that uh, the, the clamp mechanism wouldn't fit. But because this is two one terabyte chips on the face next to the controller and nothing on the back, the heatsink fit. So this was a, another original part that I forgot I've had that I've had for years that I never used because it wouldn't work on the build as I had it. If there's anything I would do differently here, oh, and obviously you guys can see the cable mod cables in the last video. Like I said, we forgot to show those, um, the actual you know mock-up of what it looked like in the little 3D rendering. Here's what we've got right here. I do like the fact that all three of these are sleeved together because the problem I always had was, sure, they could be individually sleeved, eight and eight and eight, but then they would never be perfectly aligned with each other as they made the bend. This allows me to keep it nice and straight. Uh, it's very obvious now that there's a lot of power going to those. And then same thing here with the 24 pin and the two eight pin power, everything works beautifully. I did put some carbon fiber vinyl wrap on the side of the power supply because the gray RM850X logo there would have just sort of clashed with the rest of the build since there's nothing else really gray happening in there. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty killer system. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. I don't need anything more than 32 gigs, honestly. I'm not doing editing and stuff on this system. That's why Phil has 64 gigs. This is the obviously the Threadripper 3960X, because Phil has the 3970X. And yeah, although it's not the latest you know, Zen 2 architecture from AMD, now that I've done this system, it's probably time for them to launch that CPU, making this one outdated, because that's how we roll around here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. I know these take, the, these take a while, but remember, I was building this in spare time in between other things that we're working on here. And now that it's done, I'll get all my software loaded up on this, and then I guess, you know, one of these days I might actually image my installs. That way I can literally just be like, copy, copy, done. But that would be too easy. So anyway, sound off down in the comments below what you would change about this system if it were yours. Is there anything you would change with the way the tubing is? It's, I, it filled up the space nicely, but um, without being too busy or bulky and no crazy bends or anything that really allowed me to, to take a risk with not having enough tubing. Because like I said, I, I really, I never would have taken on a build like this with the limited amount of tubing that I had, but it was a fun challenge to take on. And I'm kind of glad that I did. Got a ton of airflow. Of course, the side case panels open, but with four in intake fans on the front, there's no reason why this thing wouldn't stay nice and cool. In fact, the CPU is sitting at 30C right now with it sitting at the desktop. And then the graphics card was actually idling at 21C. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you're new around here. And don't forget, if you want to get that Size Matters merch, like I already mentioned, this is your last chance. It will be gone forever. 
The link to that is down in the comment, or not, not in the comments, in the description underneath this video. And uh, if you guys get a merch piece from us, share pictures of it with us, and then of course we'll, we'll share that because we like seeing the way you guys look if you look halfway as sexy as we do in our shirts. I mean, we're all wearing the Size Matter shirts today. You know you want one. Am I in the shot? Oh my gosh. <laughs>